This is Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine with co-hosts Fred Stogg and Les Jackson. Everything you need to know about new and used cars. Industry news will fix or repair your car on the air. Fasten your seatbelts and let us take the wheel. Now, your ride is about to begin because you're on Cruise Control. Cruise Control. Cruise Control. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. We are Les Jackson here, Fred Staub over at the other microphone. And as usual, we've got a bunch of things going on in the auto industry, most of which are pretty good, but yeah, the, some... The one we're going to start so with is not too good. Uh, lightning yeah. strike, Les Jackson. Well... Lightning strikes. Ford has to shut down the line for its F-150 Lightning pickup, and that's not good news, is it? It is not. Uh, anytime they have to shut down a line, it's not good news. Uh, and over at Chrysler, they're saying, and I hate having to say this, sedans might not be a part of their future. Yeah, at least for the meantime, they've got a great version of the uh, 300c so we'll talk about that what uh, what you still can get and uh, over at genesis there's no shortage of new product the electric gv70 gets a price we'll tell you what you can pick up one of these beauties for right les that is absolutely right uh, i drove one of the other gvs uh, last last uh, fall terrific machine anyway and uh, we're talking tech this hour this time it's spark plugs in the case of mazda they're talking about two plugs being better than one yep um, and the other issue with spark plugs is uh checking spark plugs without pulling them yeah and now now it doesn't mean there's a glass cylinder there <laughs> i know a glass cylinder that wouldn't head. work plastic cylinder head although i did see yeah. someone do that on a youtube video it was pretty pretty interesting they made a uh, hmm. solid acrylic <laughs> cylinder wow. head that lasted for a while and then it didn't but uh, yeah we'll talk no. about that and probably one of the most ignored things on on cars spark plugs people don't worry about them any anymore but i'm gonna have an at the real review of the hard to obtain vehicle known as the id4 from volkswagen people just cannot get these things they just, uh, yeah. they're just unattainium. But uh, I'm going to tell you about the new 2023 model. You might like it because it's a little bit less expensive. And uh, we'll tell you about this one that but, I drew. But you can't get it. I have <laughs> never seen one in another color. Have you? I've I have not. I've seen it in this metallic uh, blue. Yeah. Haven't. I, they, you hardly see them at all. Yeah. 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 And this was the all-wheel drive model, the Pro S. So... Uh, we'll have a full hmm. at the wheel review of that coming up and a whole lot more. A lot going on in the automotive industry. Uh, so uh, one of the biggest stories, Les, I think has to be the Oscar Mayer Wienermobile had its catalytic converter stolen this week. So. Wow. <laughs> As you know, I drove that some years ago. You did? Um, you did? Yeah, I did. Uh, up at the uh, Hershey Museum. Absolutely. Well, when and we come back, we will have more on that and more so stay tuned to cruise control radio we're on air automotive magazine fred staub and les jackson we are glad you are along for the ride and uh yep we're going to start with this story, Les. The production of the F-150 Lightning has stopped. And not because people don't want it, but because, well, they have a big issue. And it involves batteries. And yep. they don't want it to be like what happened to the Chevy Bolt, where they had battery issues and, and it was a gigantic problem. So, Ford spokesperson Emma Berg... Uh, spoke to the Motor Authority and has said that the automaker has stopped production and deliveries of the F-150 Lightning due to a potential battery problem. The stop build and an in-transit stop ship order were sent out after pre-delivery 
quality inspections found a problem. They won't reveal what it is, but it is related to the battery. So um, this is good, good action on their part because uh, if you go too far down the line and you have this problem and these vehicles get out there, oh, yeah. just like yeah. the Chevy Bolt where they were setting people's houses on fire. Well, that, that really got out of hand. It wasn't Chevy's fault. No, no, it was but actually course, LG you know, batteries that that did yeah uh so ford is you know is getting out in front of it but uh boy it, it, i don't know what happened to make them think that there's a battery problem obviously it must be in, in the factory mm -hmm. um, but if it's you know if it's big enough to stop production then uh, you know they're They've said we need a whole bunch of new batteries, uh, maybe tested a different way. And it is critical when you when the vehicle's been shipped already, and they're like, "Turn that truck oh, around, man. send it back to the plant." You know, that's that's a big thing. That's yeah, that that's here's that's a, scary stuff. Here's an interesting, not so fun fact about the Ford Lightning. Uh, the Lightning has had three price hikes since its launch. It started off at forty one thousand six sixty nine. Now it begins at fifty seven thousand eight sixty nine. That's, that's for an a, increase of sixteen thousand two hundred. <laughs> and that's just like in a year. Yeah, and it's still uh, the wow. least expensive electric pickup truck on the market. Wow. What say Man. you? <laughs> well, uh, I would I would need uh, to have. And a, an electric pickup truck uh, before I would spend that kind of money. I, I wouldn't buy it as a, you know, just as something to cool to have. Yeah. I, I, you know, as you know, I drove one just a few weeks back, um, and it's terrific. Well, actually, no, it was in October. Um, it's terrific truck, great fun to drive, but um, but that's not a reason to spend fifty seven thousand dollars. Or you could go over and buy uh, a Cadillac, a 2024 Cadillac Lyric. Now, that was announced this week that it's going to cost nearly $85,000. Well, so, um, so uh, uh, yeah. now, but you get a lot. Like the, uh, the all-wheel drive version will add $3,500 to the price. That has 500 horsepower, 450 pound-feet of torque, and 307 miles of range. That's pretty good. That is superb. Yeah. Um, but I'm not buying one. You can get it with 22-inch wheels, Les. I know you like no, that. No, no, no. <laughs> um, if you opt for their Sport 3 model, that will kick it up to 73195 And then you can keep going. <laughs> all the way to the top, if you add all, tick all the boxes, that's when you get to $85,000. Wow. Now, they do have an entry-level tech model that starts at 57, 000, starts at 57195 Well, that's not so bad. Uh, you know, the Lyric is quite a machine. Yeah. Although I'm just looking for more to I'm more the speed of the Equinox EV <laughs> or the Bolt. Uh, we're going to review yeah, the Bolt in the second hour, um, and there's an interesting situation there with the um, incentives from the government, and you could get a Bolt for about eighteen thousand dollars. Believe it or not, that boy, that's that's cheap for any <laughs> any car. car, and it's not a bad car. Uh, no, not and at all. It, that's with a you know leather seats and uh, heated seats, heated steering wheel, wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto CarPlay, uh, Android Auto CarPlay, wow. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So you know it's it's not a you know cheaply equipped vehicle. So plus that gets no. to uh, almost two hundred and sixty miles of range. So not bad. But anyway. Big money, big numbers on some of these vehicles. When we come back, though, we're going to tell you about one vehicle that is probably going away, or a whole class of vehicles, and it's Chrysler with sedan. So stay tuned to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. I'm Fred Staub. 
He is Les Jackson. We will be right back. Cruise Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control. We um, we talked about the, uh, the the going away of sedans, uh, and and of course Chrysler is hinting. And and Fred, you know what it means when a car <laughs> company hints. Yeah, it's more than a trial balloon. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah, it's you know it's it's the equivalent of honey. We have to talk. <laughs> it's like get ready for this. It's coming. Yeah. <laughs> that's right so uh but they still make the 300 which they've been making for gosh uh 25 years the original gangster car the, the, the gangster car it's a nice car yeah um but but you know it's just uh it may not be needed well uh, in their words that's it, you know what? You know it's not needed because they're going to end production in 2023. It would be tough to sell them and, after that. And it's not, um, there's no platform, I don't think, uh, that will have, there's no new version being developed. No. They do have an STLA large platform, which will go under the Dodge Charger and Challenger, but there's no real talk that they will be putting that in there, uh, building a 300C. So they do have this special edition right now, 300C. Uh, it's limited to just 2,000 examples, and it's sold out in less than 12 hours. <laughs> wow. Wow. It, it sports the 6.4-liter uh, Hemi with 485 horsepower, 475 pound-feet of torque, eight-speed auto, rear-wheel drive, zero to 60 of 4.3, uh, a 3.09 limited slip diff, active exhaust with black rounded tips, <laughs> four-piston Brembo brakes. It's a, it's a nice package, isn't it? Well, it is, but it's not an inexpensive package. No, and I'm sure people did not pay sticker for it that's right but and they have laguna leather now for, for those <laughs> laguna, old laguna enough, seca <laughs> well it's just a name for those old enough to remember corinthian leather it meant nothing <laughs> which meant nothing it was just a brand a name marketing of, term yeah you know, that's it yeah you um, know you know they've sold uh, 1.2 million of these vehicles since it launched in 2005 that's that's impressive yeah that is impressive um, you know, I think it was, I think it was a good value. I think a lot of people forgot about it and it was available yeah. with all wheel drive with a V6, with a Hemi, uh, different trim levels. Uh, the SRT version was fun. Remember that they had an SRT That's version right, of it. Yeah. It's, it's kind of the, the last, um, equivalent of the old Ford Crown Victoria. Yes, you know, absolutely. Absolutely. Just, I thought kind of about that. I, I actually think I went on one of the launches of it for uh, one of the generations, and uh, we were right down by the border, um, Mexican hmm. border driving, and I remember seeing drones. We were driving along and seeing drones. But I also thought, this is a nice car, and it is like a modernized version of the Crown Victoria, sure. you know, a little bit newer. Um, and I think we had a V6, and it, it was plenty powerful. And I thought this is a great long trip vehicle. Yeah, it's just a it's just a, a you know a great car to have for every day. Yeah, but uh, uh, and and comfortable, luxurious, and comfortable and luxurious. Yeah. Well, let's talk about one that's not going away. Matter of fact, it's just coming in, and that is the Genesis GV70. This is a U.S. assembled. We know why it's U.S. assembled, because it's electric, and they want it to be U.S. assembled so you can yep. get those incentives. Um, and it is the first ever fully electrified GV70. Uh, it it looks like your GV70, that or GV60, actually. Right. Uh, 
The manufacturer's price is going to be sixty-five thousand eight fifty, and that is loaded uh, with uh, full suite of safety and other driver assistance. Uh, you can get the Prestige all-wheel drive version for seventy-two thousand six fifty. Mm. That's a lot of chips. It's getting up there, but it is a Genesis. At 160 which... kilowatt front and 160 kilowatt rear electric motors. And I believe the range is somewhere in the low 300s on this. That's what I think. 77.4 uh, kilowatt hour battery. Yeah, I am I was... I, I, I don't know the range offhand, but I was guessing the high twos, like 280, 290. Yeah. So I'll sure they'll sell every one of these. <laughs> well, it, they will. It, it's Genesis a, it's a good is looking such vehicle. a. Yeah, it's a, it's a. Well, and it's just such a fine brand. It's so well done. Yeah. But once again, big number on the price. You know, you're up in big the 70s. Numbers. Easy, 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 easy 70s or more. Uh, I My take, and this is just me, you know, I get asked this all the time. Oh, I bet you'd buy an electric car. Not an expensive electric car. I would not buy an expensive no. electric car. I would buy no. a Bolt, as I mentioned earlier, like the upcoming, um, the upcoming Equinox EV something in the $30,000 range because we don't know Same what's going to happen with electric cars. There's all kinds of battery improvements on the way. There was just a study uh, in Japan that they said we could replace lithium with magnesium and have batteries that charge quicker and have more power density. There's solid state batteries that may be coming along. We just don't know where this is all going. And, right. and you know, you don't want to kind of uh, lock yourself into a seventy, eighty thousand dollar car, and then find out, hey, well, there's much better technology available three years later. If um, if I want, you know, if I was driving the family hauler, <laughs> okay, and, and that's you know going trips and everything else, and I wanted just something else for local errands, um, I'd go. I'd find myself a Fiat Electric. You know, oh wow! Used that's Fiat Electric. You can get them cheap. You can get them real cheap because they only had eight real miles cheap. of range. They were a compliance yeah, car, but that's right? but that's enough for you know for a little going to school and you know dropping the kids off and and. I'd probably go one better. Store. I'd probably buy the Bolt. You know. Well, would... the Bolt is great, but I'm thinking in terms of just you know for for a very small amount of money, uh, have something practical. Yeah, I know what you're saying. They, uh, they, a few years ago, that you could pick them up for seven to eight thousand dollars. That's right. They were going for as, as little as as the high sevens. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what they are now. I, uh, you know, you and I were talking during the break, but uh, used car prices have dropped fourteen and a half percent, something yep. like that. But I don't know. I don't know with that vehicle. Maybe we'll check it. <laughs> we'll check it during the break, but. Um, yeah, and it was only supposed to be sold, I believe, in California and a couple other states, but they made it all over the country. They did, but there are very few of them. Yeah, very few of them. So, But anyway, I, I feel I would go for something uh, a little less expensive, dip my toe in. You could always do a plug-in hybrid. Yep. Uh, or Nissan Leaf. A Nissan Leaf, yeah. A used Nissan Leaf might be, a, might be yeah. an option for sure. So there you have it. Just our take. But if you want to go out and buy that Lyric or the GV70 Electrified, go for it. There's <laughs> one waiting for you. There's one waiting for you. We're ready to go. Can I get your business today? <laughs> That's right. What do, what do I need to do to put you into this? <laughs> yeah, all, all, all good. Hey, you're listening to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. Coming up, we're going to talk a little tech. We're going to talk about spark plugs. We don't talk about spark plugs that much. <sighs> No. Especially when it comes to electric cars. We don't talk about them at all, spark plugs on electric cars. Well, I think you we need, should do that more, don't you, Les? You need very few of them for this. <laughs> for the... Yeah, you only need one or two. That's a, that's. Yep. You don't need one for every cylinder. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, a couple of uh, interesting spark plug uh, bits of technology. One's going to come from Mazda with a two-plug per cylinder engine. That's like the drag racing engines with nitromethane. They run two plugs to light yeah. off all well, that fuel. You know, 
They're, so they're pumping like eight shower heads of fuel that's the equivalent right. into an engine, so you need to light that off. But anyway, we'll talk about spark plugs when we come back on Cruise Control Radio and a whole lot more, so stay tuned. Cruise Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. Fred Staub, Les Jackson, talking spark plugs. Nobody thinks mm -hmm. about spark plugs anymore, Les, because you have them in your engine. They're good for 100,000 miles. They probably don't think about them after that. Either. No, you don't. Do they just don't. Yeah. Well, well, you know, they, they, they run so clean. Yeah, that, you don't uh, you don't they just, just last. You just don't think about it. OK, well, we never really talk about them much on uh, cruise control, but we've got a couple of talk and tech segments that you might find interesting that deal hmm. exclusively with uh, spark plugs. And one of them comes from uh, Car Buzz and their patent people because they always keep us uh, filled with stories about their uh, patents they find at the U.S. Patent Trademark Office. And sometimes uh, it's all around the world where they find these patents. But uh, they have come up with um, one that combines Sky ActiveX technology, which is a tech type of engine technology in Mazda, with a second spark plug for bigger gains. So basically what they're doing what Mazda wants to do is they have this engine that at low loads, low speeds, it will become like a diesel. The spark plugs won't fire at all. It is just from the heat of compression. It's going to light it off. It is very high compression ratio engine. Uh, as I say, a, an extremely high compression ratio gas engine, <laughs> making a very similar diesel. Most diesels are very high compression, right? Um so while you're on low loads uh, or light throttle, it will the spark plugs won't fire. But the problem is with this engine, when you now have to get onto the highway or something, you can get very bad detonation um, right. you for would, the time would. it takes for the spark plugs now to kick in, right? So what they're patenting is a second spark plug in a little pre-chamber. And it has these little holes in it that it will light off. That the fuel will be directed to this pre-chamber. It will light off and the, the flame basically will come through these little holes into the main chamber where another spark plug will light it off again. And this supposedly will avoid that kind of detonation and allow you to run on, on the... Uh, homologous compression charge ignition, you know, when you're just idling or when you're just driving along right, on the highway. Pump gas. But as soon as you kick it in, the this dual cylinder setup, the first spark plug will fire, you know, a small, uh, just a little bit ahead of the second uh, spark plug. And that's how this whole thing works. So that's, that's a little yeah. quick explanation of it. But it's pretty cool. It's not like, as I was talking about the racing engines before when we came in, where they have so much fuel load, they have to use two sparks, uh, two plugs, otherwise, right. uh, with two magnetos, otherwise it will wash out the spark. So this is a little bit more involved. What do you think about this? Well, uh, the, the little pre-chamber reminds me of the Honda Control Vortex combustion Absolutely. chambers of the 70s, which is very high technology. Especially uh, them, it's a great yeah. idea, and and I just think it's uh, I I'd like to feel one of these engines, see how well it responds. And well, I drove uh, one uh, that was similar to this a while back. GM was developing it, and uh, it was some SUV test mule that they were doing. The guy had a whole bunch of electronics mounted to the dashboard, and we drove it around, and it was seamless. I was like. And it's like, okay, uh, what's what's happening here? Because <laughs> it doesn't, it seems like a vehicle, yeah. but with just a lot of stuff bolted to the uh, dashboard and wires, you know? 
And uh, he said, oh, well, it's sort of like a diesel, but it's burning gas. And here's the takeaway. And, and we're going to do this story uh, a little bit later. The internal combustion engine is going to be around for quite some time yet. And it will get even more improvement improvements and more efficient and cleaner. And you look at what the uh, European Union has said, they're going to keep it around with synthetic fuels and everything else. So I don't sure, I don't sure. think development's going to stop on it per se. Well, it's it's going to slow down, but it's not not going to stop. Um just uh, I know you'll be interested in this. I was uh, at the uh, Smithsonian restoration and storage facility out in Maryland over Christmas. They have the original uh, 1909 Wright Flyer. Oh, wow. Uh, that, that was used for the military to test. It was number two. Number one crashed, actually, and killed Lieutenant Selfridge, um, first person to die in a car crash. Plane crash. Um, or in a plane crash. But anyway, they have this thing. It's completely unrestored. It is a, as it was in 1909. And they have the spark plugs laying out on the... Uh, uh, on the wing and the spark plugs look remarkably similar to today's spark plugs these are all things the wright brothers themselves uh were developing or working on pretty neat it's really cool not too bad for some guys that had a bicycle shop right absolutely well but <laughs> they were you know they were very scientific about the way they did things yeah uh, very cool yeah very cool how they would warp the wing to control it and that it, it was neat. Yep. which only worked at low speed low only at low speed yeah so like it wouldn't work for 747 taking off uh, <laughs> very very poorly <laughs> i would love to ha have had then seen that type of uh you know plane they would have i think it would have uh, boggled their mind huh it would be neat i'd, I'd like to actually see one they, they have reproductions of them it, it, probably go see one fly somewhere yeah interesting stuff we love the technology but that's your you're talking tech and you know interesting stuff uh let's jump back into the product though and uh, there has been a plethora of uh companies uh talking about getting into the mid-size and smaller pickup market could it mm -hmm. be due to the popularity of the ford maverick i think so um and this week, we heard that it looks like the Dakota is coming back. The small Ram pickup is going to be coming back. There's some test mules out there, so uh, we'll, we'll st keep you tuned on that one. But now, Mitsubishi is considering a small pickup for the U.S., and they could bring back a truck to the U.S., uh, but there are some hurdles to cross. But the drive is saying uh, pickup trucks were another one of those things they want to figure out. Wouldn't that wouldn't that be great? They make Mitsubishi pickup trucks around the world, and they're used. Wouldn't that be great for a Mitsubishi to do this? It would be. I it think would be. Smart it would move. be great. You know, um, and they might repurpose the uh, the drive uh, pointed out that they might repurpose the existing Rogue platform, as you know. Mitsubishi and Nissan are tied together. Uh, but, you know, I think they probably should do with what they did with the Ranger because the Ranger was an um, Ranger, Ranger and also the um, Maverick were kind of international products where small, light four cylinder pickup trucks mm -hmm. are used often, you know, in developing countries. And I'm sure they have something that they could uh, work off of like that, couldn't they? I, I'm sure they do. And you remember back in the 70s and 80s, Mitsubishi had the L200 pickup truck? Yeah. Little, little truck. Now, I was going to say they had the Pup as well, but that was a Zuzu. Yeah, the Pup. The, wasn't that a Zuzu, though? I think that was the, the pick, pick. No, uh, yeah. A Zuzu was the Pup. Uh, Mitsubishi was the L200, but I think, uh, was was that sold by Dodge as the little red truck? Mm, it might be. I have to do some. Yeah, uh, yeah. Not, not the little red sure wagon. The little red wagon no. was a step side with a 360 and stacks coming up through the. Right, uh, right. We'll, we'll look that up. We'll look that up. We got a lot to look up. We got to look up 
the price of an electric Fiat 500, a 500e, and and you've got to look at. We just got a lot of homework here. We got to. Wow, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that I think I think it's a great idea for Mitsubishi. I think they will probably do it at some form. Of course, Volkswagen's going to be coming out with something similar to the. Um, I guess it would be kind of like the Maverick. Uh, it's also like the Timberline, uh, which Honda makes. And the Santa Cruz, which um, Hyundai makes, sort of a car crossover uh, pickup car type of thing, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's that's coming. A lot more of these are coming. So it's an exciting time. A lot of, a lot of new products coming up. Um, and then, Les, if you really want to spend money, um, Dodge is going to bring out its last call model the final of the seven last call models it will debut march 20th in vegas and uh, they say those vehicles so far have been going for double the sticker price wow wow when we come back we'll tell you about one that well you can buy but uh, it's kind of hard to find i'll have an at the wheel review of the Volkswagen ID4. Stay tuned to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine with Fred Staub and Les Jackson. Fifty-six cruise control, and welcome back to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. It's Fred Staub and Les Jackson. We're glad you're along for the ride. We've got an at-the-wheel review this time. It is the hard to obtain but fun to hmm. drive <laughs> from Volkswagen. The ID4, two-tone paint, good-looking vehicle. You know, I think this is one of the first family-sized all-electric vehicles with good range, and that's why it's been so popular. Also, it is built in Chattanooga, Tennessee now, so that means it's going to be probably eligible uh, for a, a full uh, $7,500 benefit, tax benefit, and that's going to be good news for people buying this. Also good news... For 2023, they have a 62 kilowatt hour battery model, which starts, the entry level starts at 38995 Now, hmm. that makes it more obtainable than, a, let's say, a $60,000, $80,000 SUV. But the problem is you just can't get them. I went on last night to Volkswagen's uh, uh, website just to see, and... You can't, it says we're not accepting any orders for 2023 models. And look where we are. We're just in the middle, a little bit past the middle of February. <laughs> 2023. <Yeah. laughs> so <laughs> that's a so, problem, you, isn't it? And you can't order a 24 model, right? And get no. in line for that? No, there's no, wow. no ordering it. But uh, let's talk a little bit about hmm. the ID4. And uh, I found it to be quite nice i love the way it drove 295 horsepower uh, i'm sorry uh 200 and, yeah 295 horsepower um and uh, with the 62 kilowatt hour battery that's 209 miles of range with the 82 kilowatt hour battery which which is the one we had 275 miles of range which is not bad ours was all wheel drive uh on the inside it's I'll, I'll call it a little austere because it takes a page out of Volkswagen's design cues that we've seen on the new Golf GTI where very few actual buttons except for some haptic buttons, c control buttons beneath the uh, touchscreen. You get all kinds of menus on the touchscreen. Of course, you get, uh, you know, the standard things you'd expect for radio and everything else. But you also get a lot of detail 
on your uh, power usage, which is great. And you do have some slider volume controls, which I'm not a big fan of at the bottom of the touchscreen. Once yeah, again, I, very, very much similar to the uh, Golf uh, GTI lesson. Uh, it also has a confusing jumble of buttons to the left of the steering wheel, which I'm, I'm just, I'm just not a fan of. I'm not, I, I'm not, I'm not digging what they lay down when it comes, when well, it comes to that. <laughs> that's right. Well, it's, that's, it, it's so easy. A child can use it. So you have to bring a child with you when you. Now to start it up, it. they have a, a, a push button on the side of the steering column. And then you have this little kind of stock. Thing, stubby stock that you kind of roll forward or back to change gears or uh, go into braking mode uh, or or go into park that worked pretty well because shifters have become fairly confusing uh, center console nice to see you have uh, wireless charging and a bunch of USB-C uh, connectors we like that a lot overall though on the interior it's pretty plain it's not as plain as a Tesla but it is pretty plain as far as design cues when it comes in. Out back, uh, good leg room, flat floor. I do like the perforated leather seats, especially with the ID4 logo in it. Rear seat passengers get a couple of charging points, uh, US, USB-C, which is not bad. As I, I said, the USB uh, connections are the new cup holders. Seat folds relatively flat. Nothing uh, out of the ordinary there. Out back, good storage, um, a low lift over in the back, and uh, some storage cubbies on the side. Um, you uh, get, of course, the 110-volt charger, but uh, no spare tire. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind, you know. Might be worth it to join mm -hmm. AAA or something like that. I love the two-tone look of this with the metallic blue and the silver top. It's not even a, the the roof is not even it's not even the whole roof. It's sort of that little trim panel that goes uh, up around the w the windows and the green greenhouse area. Uh, overall, good-looking vehicle though. Uh, does up front it looks like a golf to me, sort of. It doesn't break ground. It it stays very traditional to the uh, Volkswagen cues. Uh, this was the all-wheel drive Pro S model, as I said before. Uh, all-wheel drive up for uh, those of us up in the northeast and, and also in your area, Les. We like that all-wheel drive capability. I probably yep. would not buy an SUV without it. But uh, good-looking vehicle, hard to obtain. But I tell you, I enjoy driving it. A lot of power in this thing. All-wheel drive, you hit it, you go. I mean, there's no... There's no uh, discussion. You go right away. 295 horsepower, which is not bad at all for this vehicle and all-wheel drive. Um, futuristic design. I think they cut a few corners. I'm not, I'm not a fan on the inside of the carpeted back seat, but that's sort of a Volkswagen thing. I know they do that in the Atlas. I would say this is about the size of the Atlas if you need Need so is the the rear leg room is pretty good rear leg room is good flat floor um i liked it uh, i really liked it. i like the integrated spoiler the black roof uh you know not much under the hood not too impressive just lots of black plastic there but that's mm -hmm. where the front motor is no storage or frunk per se but uh you know that's okay we've come to expect that but uh, it doesn't have it that's okay this is built on the MEB architecture, which will basically be the uh, underpinning of many vehicles in the future of their lineup. Um, I'd like to see that they brought in that less uh, expensive model, which I think is uh, it's a good thing. Uh, you do give up the range, uh, but not terribly. I mean, uh, 209 for the entry-level model versus 275 for the uh, one that we tested. Um, the estimated fuel economy for the all-wheel drive Pro S uh, is 93 MPGE in highway driving, 99 combined. Um, great vehicle. I have a neighbor that has one of these. He loves it. He had the charger installed in his garage. Uh, so you can charge this up pretty much to full uh, range in about eight hours if you have that level two charger. Of course, if you have a level one charger, it's going to take significantly longer. Yeah, it's like, like 20 hours. But, um, 
you know, not a bad price as things go. Mm-hmm. As tested, uh, our vehicle, and let me uh, scroll to this. It's pretty easy to order one of these, by the way. If you could, uh, if you could get it, it would be pretty easy to order. It. They don't have you're a lot just, of options. You're just teasing people. Now. That's right. I know. I, I mean, it's uh, MSRP was forty seven thousand seven ninety five. Destination one thousand two hundred ninety five. For an MSP MSRP starting at forty nine thousand ninety. Now I don't think they are marking these things up. I just think they can't get them, which is unfortunate. And I think it must be incredibly frustrating for not only consumers but for dealers and Volkswagen because if they hmm. could build like you know five hundred thousand more of them, they could probably sell them, right? Well, yeah, and and they'll reach a point probably late this year where they'll be able to keep up with the demand, and they'll reopen the order books. Yeah, um, and but everything will be fine. Keep but it's that still... in mind. We're, we're mid February, yeah. and it's a twenty twenty three model, <laughs> no and they're like, "Sorry, we're That's not right. accepting orders." So, man. So uh, I believe my neighbor said he wasn't planning on buying an electric vehicle. Came in, and a guy had put down a deposit and said he wouldn't be needing it he wasn't he wasn't going to take it so he grabbed it and he said if he had gotten there like an hour later it would have been gone so mm. there you have it unobtainium volkswagen id4 hopefully yep. if you want one you can get one soon hey it's time for me to say i'm fred Staub. i'm les jackson we are going to see you down the road Bye.